All right, next up we have a really cool talk on lost and found certificates by Ian Foster and Dylan Airy. Please give them a warm welcome. Thank you very much. I'm Ian. Um, I help run Torcon, so hopefully you're all enjoying it a bit. And this is my co-presenter, Dylan. Uh, so this is Ian. He made a cert graph. Um, he's a DNS researcher, and uh, you can check out more of his stuff from the URLs there. And uh, I'm, I'm Dylan. I wrote Trufflehog and some other stuff, and you can check out my GitHub. <coughs> Uh, so basically the problem that we're talking about today is um, what happens when an SSL certificate um, exceeds the lifespan of a uh, domain's ownership. So basically you, you buy a domain, you get a valid SSL certificate, and then the domain um, expires or transfers ownership. The original certificate is still valid. Um, and so uh, this, this phenomenon um, can last for years in certain cases uh, if you get a, say, three-year SSL certificate. And prior to 2013, um, there was absolutely no way to get any kind of visibility into this issue or tell that any previous owner of the domain uh, may still have a valid SSL cert. And so this example that we've demonstrated at the bottom here, um, Alice can register a domain name for food.com for one year and get a three SSL certificate for that domain name at the time of registration. Then the domain name can become unregistered, say Alice doesn't renew it. Um, and then later Bob can register it and get his own SSL certificate all while Alice's three SSL certificate is still valid, completely unaware of where to Bob. And so, I also want to talk about certificate of transparency, which is a publicly auditable log of all trusted certificates by certificate authorities. It is designed to catch misbehaving certificate authorities, and currently it's about half a million certificates and growing. And so right here we have a screenshot of a certificate transparency search tool, CRT.sh, um, showing an example of searching for certificates for Google.com, saying that you can see um, their lo log to date, the date, how long they're good for, and some other information. If you click on it, you can view more information. Uh, so basically, we can use this to get some visibility into this problem, which we didn't have before. Um, these certificates from previous owners um, will often get logged in certificate transparency, uh, and, and we can use that to tell if a previous owner still has a valid uh, SSL certificate. It's not perfect, and a lot of the old certificates um, take years to show up, and sometimes they never show up. Um, but it's way more visibility than we had before, and uh, new certificates that are minted are actually required to show up in uh, certificate transparency logs. So using this method, we looked for notable examples of this problem, um, and we were able to find some. Uh, one that's pretty notable is Stripe.com. Stripe is basically an online payment processor um, that uh, they basically conduct credit card transactions for a lot of different e-commerce websites. Um, if you've bought stuff online, you probably at some point have interacted with Stripe. Um, and what we found is when they bought Stripe.com, the previous owner of Stripe.com still had a valid SSL certificate. Uh, the certificate has since expired, um, but for a little while there was some overlap and we thought it was worth mentioning because it's pretty notable. And so next we set to try to figure out how big is this issue. So we search certificate transparency for certificates that overlap multiple domain registrations. Um, and so when, what we end up doing is look at about 3 million, to, 3 million randomly selected domain names and their associated 7.7 .7 million certificates, which is about just 1% of the internet. And to figure out domain name changes, we, our ownership changes, we looked at expiration dates, the email contacts and who is, the registrar, name servers, and some other information. And for this, we use the, the certificate transparency logs, historical who is, historical name servers, and archive.org's Wayback Machine. This analysis was not perfect. There were some false positives and false negatives, but it should be a low enough amount to where it still gives us an idea of the picture of how big this issue is. And we found that about 1.5 million domain names on the internet, or just less than half a percent of the internet, have a certificate for a pre-existing domain name. So it means that the there are certificates that are made before the domain name was registered and entered out into its registration time. And about 25% of these certificates have not expired yet, meaning they are still valid. You know, these owners of these certificates can actively right now man, SSL man in the middle the other, to the current domain name users. And we are calling this new um, phenomenon bygone SSL, which is an SSL, we are defining as an SSL certificate that is created before and supersedes its domain name's current registration date. So we, we try to figure out now, could this be any worse? So as many of you probably know, certificates can have many domain names, which are called alt names. 
Um, and this means that certificates can contain some bygone domain names and some that are not. So in this example here, we have a certificate for foo.com, bar.com. Uh, bar.com has only ever had one owner, where foo.com is what we're calling a bygone domain name, meaning it has changed owners. And the certificate is valid for both of these domain names. So uh, again, we looked for notable examples of this. And we're choosing to sort of blur out most of this and not say which CDN, because this is still an active issue. But for one of the CDNs we looked at, they actually had 700 customers put on the same certificate. And it's common for CDNs to share certificates among customers. Uh, but this one was notable because they put 700 on the same cert. And they weren't paying any attention to whether or not domains transferred ownership. So the one highlighted here actually was available for purchase. It had expired. Um, and we could have uh, you know, easily bought it, and then it would have become um, a bygone uh, SSL certificate. So basically, we're left with two choices here. Like, should we have the right to revoke these certificates as the new domain owner? If we say no, um, you can imagine a scenario where a new company or startup shells out a whole bunch of money for like the perfect domain just for them. Um, and then they check the certificate transparency logs, find out that the previous owner still has a valid cert, and they have to live with it. There's nothing they can do. It might be a three-year cert, and they might have to just, for the next three years, live with the fact that the previous owner still has a valid certificate. You can imagine scenarios where bad guys may go out and purchase a whole bunch of desirable domains, maybe single-word domains, um, and they could just squat on them and only selectively hand them out to e-commerce websites. Um, and they can uh, set all that up so that they can get valid certificates and uh, commit uh, financial crimes. Uh, and, if we, and if we say that they don't have the right to revoke these certs, um, then we, we just have to live with that reality and there's nothing we can do about it. If, if we say yes and we grant new owners the right to revoke these certificates, because certificates share multiple domains and because you can have a certificate, like in the case of the CDN, where you have many customers with legitimate domains and one, uh, one domain that's become bygone, um, this would basically give strangers on the internet the power to revoke these certificates and break the production websites of the other 700 customers on the cert in that case. Um, or in the case of a company, maybe the company just gets a certificate, puts five of their own domains on it, um, and then one of those domains they no longer want to use, it expires, but the other uh, domains are still actively using the cert. Um, this would give a stranger on the internet the power to take down all the other uh, websites using that certificate. So you try to dig a little deeper and learn more about this. And we learned about the CAB browser forum. Um, and this is a group of representatives from both certificate authorities and web browsers that get together and create the set of rules that dictate how CAs and browsers operate. And if this contract set of rules is broken, browsers distrust certificate authorities. And this set of rules is called the baseline requirements for the issuance and management of publicly trusted certificates. It is very long and very dry. But in, in section 963, um, where it talks about re reporting revocation of SL certificates, it mentions that if any information in the certificate becomes inaccurate or incorrect, that the certificate authority should revoke the certificate. Um, so there's a little bit of ambiguity with that. Um, what, what it actually means for a certificate to become inaccurate, uh, I don't actually know. Um, if, a cert if somebody issues a certificate and then they put some information in it um, and then that domain transfers ownership, is that information inaccurate now? That's, I think one could argue either way. But this new section that we found, 4.9.1.1, kind of puts the nail in the coffin. Um, it, it says basically if domain name registrants fail to renew their domain and certificate authorities become made aware of this, within 24 hours they must revoke the certificate. Um, that seems really uh, explicit and cut and dry. That being said, we did speak to some CA slash B um, members and they, they were very upfront and they told us that these, you know, these documents are by and large created by lawyers, um, not by engineers, and they can be in some cases self-contradictory and in some cases some of the sections um, may uh, be referenced by other sections in weird ways. So to the best of our understanding, uh, our interpretation is we can revoke these certificates, uh, but that's caveated by the fact these documents are really complicated and made by lawyers. And so going back to the prior example here, we have a certificate for boo.com and far.com. This means that the certificate for food.com can be revoked because it's shared with food.com, which has changed ownership. Um, so it means that potentially anyone who finds a certificate can revoke bar.com's SL certificate, causing a SL error for their users, which would be a denial of service. And so looking at our same data set for examples of this, 
where domain names share, share an SSL certificate with um, another domain with its alt name, we found that 7 million domain names approximately are vulnerable, which is just over 2% two per, two of the internet. And that's a 4x increase in our previous analysis. And of these certificates, 41% uh, are still valid and have not expired. So that means, in theory, maybe of these 7 million domain names, 41% of these can actively, actively use. If the certificate is being used, you can reach out to the CA and have them be revoked, in theory. So basically, um, this, this made us realize, like, those 300, or uh, sorry, 3 million certificates that are still valid, um, if Ian and I wanted to, we could potentially revoke all of them. And the certificate authorities would have to revoke them within 24 hours of us asking them to. Um, we can break large swaths of the internet, and more particularly, um, CDNs that put multiple customers on the same certificate, if they're not paying attention to domains transferring ownership, we can render those CDNs pretty unusable by just continuously re spinning up new domains and revoking certificates with them. So we're calling this issue bygone SSL, and we, we think it kind of deserves a, sort of a new class of vulnerability definition. It's got two variants. The first is the one that we initially talked about, bygone SSL, man in the middle. And that's what happens when you get a uh, certificate for a domain that you own, and then you transfer ownership of that domain or it expires, and you still have a valid SSL certificate for it when someone else picks up the new domain, uh, and that gives you the ability to man in the middle of the new owner. And the other variant is bygone SSL denial of service, the one we were just talking about here, where if a certificate has a subject alt name for a domain name that is no longer owned or can be taken over, then the new owner of that domain name can reach out to the CA and revoke that certificate um, for from the vulnerable domain name, which can affect the non-bygone non SL man, the middle domain name, causing a potential denial of service if the shared certificate is still in use. So if you remember back to the example with 700 domains on it, I mentioned that one of them was available for purchase. We purchased it. Um, it was like $11, and that, to the best of our knowledge, gives us the right to revoke the certificate and break the websites of the other 700 people using it. Um, so for our live demo, I'm going to be tabbing over to an email client, and in real time, I'm going to ask that they revoke this SSL certificate. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not really going to do that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, we, but we totally, uh, to our understanding, have the right to do that, and they would have to do it um, within 24 hours. Um, based on our understanding. So for our uh, pre-recorded demo, um, we reached out to a couple of certificate authorities uh, to actually test this. And we didn't do this with real CDNs. We just created certificates with subject alt names for a bunch of domains that we owned. Um, but we didn't make that immediately transparent to the certificate authorities. Um, so in the first case here, I reached out to Digicert and I said, hey, this certificate um, that has some alt names on it uh, well, I, I just bought this domain, and my domain is on that certificate. Um, can you please revoke that old certificate? And they uh, were really good about it. Within 24 hours, they actually did revoke the certificate, and the other domains that we had that were using it in production um, broke. Uh, if you tried to visit them, they had HSTS enabled, and you couldn't uh, render or visit them in any way because the SSL certificate was invalid or it was uh, revoked. Now, uh, the next one we reached out to was Amazon. Um, Amazon was also pretty good about it, but the issue we had there was we didn't want to actually make an Amazon account, and really the only good way to get support from Amazon is to have an Amazon account. So the previous owner of the certificate had an Amazon account. We just wanted to reach out to some support and say, hey, please revoke that. So we, we looked for an email that we could reach out to that might be able to route us to the right place. The one we found was their EC2 abuse email. That one was public. And with a little bit of back and forth explaining the situation, um, that actually worked. They were able to route us to the right place. Um, we had to verify ownership of the domain, but within a couple of weeks, um, they also revoked the, uh, the certificate. Um, now, on the other side of the coin, we reached out to Komodo, and we asked them to, uh, same thing, we asked them to revoke the certificate. Um, and every single time we reached out to them via support chat and via email, they basically told us this wasn't possible. If we weren't the original people that created the certificate, 
Um, they weren't going to help us. And in the bottom there, you can actually see with one of the support chats, they told us, um, you can forget about the old SSL certificate. Don't worry about that one. Uh, but you can buy a new one, no problem. Uh, we'll, we'll sell you a new one. Um, so basically, they, they, they wouldn't help us, and they tried to use it as an upselling opportunity to sell us other services. So next, we try using Let's Encrypt, which is a little bit of a different type of CA. Um, they rely almost entirely on automation um, for generating certificates, revoking certificates, or anything else um, using the ACME protocol. Uh, and so their current policy, specified by ACME, is to require proving ownership of all the domain names before you can revoke it. Um, so reach out to their CPS contact to talk to them about this, ask them about this, and they recognize that this is a conflict with the agreement in the CA browser form where you should be able to revoke with just proving ownership of a subset of the domain names. And however, it's not clear what they'll do, um, but they are considering changing the policy to be more compliant or to change this. So in the future, this might be an automated way that you can revoke these, these Let's Encrypt certificates by proving a subset. But in the meantime, if you are vulnerable, to, if you have a domain vulnerable to this, there, and you only have a subset of the domains, there's no way you can get Let's Encrypt to revoke this certificate. So next, I'd like to point out a tool that I wrote a while ago called CertGraph. And CertGraph is an open source intelligence tool to call the graph of certificate alternative names. And this works, basically, you give a domain name, and it will find all certificates for that domain name. Um, and each of those alt names and all the certificates find all certificates for all those domain names and keep going and going until it creates a complete graph. So in this example, um, the purple node, which is for EFF.org, is the domain name I provided it. It reached out and found these certificates in the red nodes that are valid for that domain name. And then for those alt names are the other green nodes that are related domain names it found. Um, and so you can use this tool. I wrote it for doing domain name enumeration through SL certificates. It can use both connecting the sites over HTTP or using certific certificate transparency or SMTP or other protocols as well. But you can use it to for deter finding sites that are vulnerable for bygone SL denial of service, which can be very useful if you want to find sites that are vulnerable either yourself or for targets from Alan Smith to eval um, a bug bounty. And at the bottom here, I just have the, um, the kind of options you provide to this to enumerate these domain names. So you tell it to go depth one. You don't need to create the entire graph, just the graph of your target. Um, and you're say driver Google, which is using Google certificate transparency search engine, um, includes certificate transparency subdomain names, includes certificates for CDNs. Um, and look at, at the DNS records of all the domain names found to see if they are unregistered. And TLD plus one will also look up the top level domain name for a given domain name found. So for example, say www.eff.org, it would also check for eff.org. Um, not just one level up, but the actual domain name at the registrar level. And so using this tool, we found one example here with Salesforce. So here I ran the tool on the domain name salesforce.com. It's up there, the purple node. And it created this graph. And it all ended up here at Squarespace, which has no connection to Salesforce. And so what happened is they're linked here via this chain of domain names and search through do.com. And the story here is that do.com was once owned by Salesforce, and they had a SL certificate for it. And then they lost control of that domain name. Squarespace bought it up. But that alt name was still being served by Salesforce's domain name giving one, Salesforce, try Squarespace, the ability to revoke Salesforce.com's production, www.salesforce.com SL certificate and causing downtime for them. Or alternatively, Salesforce.com could have manned the middle Squarespace because they had a valid SL certificate for one of their domain names. And actually, if you look at that graph, the certificate that do.com is, is uh, shared with on Salesforce isn't just for Salesforce.com. It's for a whole bunch of sites, that circle of green dots on the left there. If Squarespace wanted to, they could take that whole cert down and all of those websites from Salesforce would stop working. Yeah, so getting a little deeper in this here, we see on the left is the historical um, DNS for do.com. We find this isn't just unique to, for this particular domain name, is not just unique to Squarespace or Salesforce. This domain name here has been hosted at Microsoft's name servers, AWS, um, and a few others. So at the period in time when that previous graph is taken, we've highlighted in these red boxes uh, in this example. In the right, we have a screenshot for that SL certificate in question for both do.com and wildcard.do.com and all these other Salesforce domain names um, taken from the CRTSA certificate transparency search. Basically, what we were finding was for some of these single word domains, they transfer ownership a lot, and they usually transfer ownership from big companies. So we think that this domain was actually owned by Microsoft at one point, um, and it was owned by Salesforce, and it was owned by Squarespace, and all of that was potentially within the lifespan of one SSL certificate, which further um, strengthens the argument that a bad guy would potentially be able to squat on desirable domains. And uh, also for the point, I believe last we checked, this domain name was um, available for purchase if them wants to buy it. 
Um, so uh, another tool that we, we wrote, um, this one specifically geared at finding just this problem, is uh, this bygone SSL tool that uses um, Facebook's API to, again, search certificate transparency logs. Um, and it's configured to look for both um, bygone SSL denial of service and bygone SSL man in the middle. Um, all you have to do is give it accurate information on when you first registered a domain and give it a complete list of all domains that you own. And it'll tell you if any of your domains share certificates with um, domains that you don't own. And it'll also tell you if there are any uh, SSL certificates that predate the date that you purchased the domain. And another um, tool that we worked on writing is we added bygone SSL detection to SSLmate Search Spotter. And Search Spotter is a certificate transparency log monitor, so you'll run it yourself or you can use their hosted version. And it looks at all of the cer cer certificate transparency logs, looks for SSL certificates, and alert you if a certificate is logged for a domain name that you're monitoring. So you provide a watch list in this example here. Um, we have Instagram Design, Defcon.org, Torconda.net, Wikipedia.org, and the valid at date, which would be the date that you have acquired access to this domain name. And then it puts this little um, bygone SL equals true flag in the domain's output information if it finds that the certificate was generated before that valid at date but, and also valid after, meaning that you should be aware that the certificate, you probably don't have control over it and might want to get revoked. And so at this point, you might be thinking, like, what can you do to protect your domain names or your own sites? And the answer is kind of complicated. The best you can do is use the expect CT HTTP header with the enforce flag to ensure that only CT log search will be trusted for your domain name. So that means that if a certificate is found um, or served for your site that is not in search of transparency, it will not be trusted. And one limitation of this is that this only protects users on their on who first connect to your legitimate site. If their first connection to your site is through someone who's man the middle of you, there's nothing you can do, unfortunately, at this time. Um, and then, of course, if a pre-existing certificate it already exists for your domain name and it is in CT logs, um, it would still work with this case. That's why it's important to monitor CT logs and reach out to the issuing CAs and have those certificates revoked for your domain names. And so as a good thing to our next thing, um, CT has only been required for non-EV certs since April of this year. So prior to the certificates issued prior to April of this year do not need to be in CT to be trusted by browsers. Um, there's, so that prior existing cert is, is not in there. You don't know what's not in there. It's a double negative set. Um, but that being said, there are certificates issued before April this year that are still in there. For example, I had a certificate from 2009 show up in CT logs very recently. So at any point in time, certificates can be backported or backlogged into CT. So it's important to clean our CT logs. You can use our search bar and bygone SL tools or use cert graph. And then we also have some asks for the general internet. Um, basically, when you register a domain, the registrar could do a check in certificate transparency for you, um, and they could let you know ahead of time if a previous owner uh, still has a valid certificate. Um, we think that would be a nice feature. Also, CAs could shift to um, models with sh shorter lived uh, SSL certificates or li shorter lifespans. Um, so Let's Encrypt kind of is paving the road for that. Their uh, certificates can only be 90 days, um, but other certificate authorities issue certificates that are much longer, um, and we think that if they also cut down their lifetime, it wouldn't remediate the issue completely, but it would make it um, much less severe. Um, we think that uh, also if you um, do request that you uh, revoke a certificate, the certificate authority should do due diligence and notify all the other alt names on the certificate um, when they do the revocation. So that way denial of service doesn't just come from nowhere. At least you have a little bit of a heads up. Um, we think that certificate authorities also shouldn't issue certificates that exceed the lifespan of the domain registration. So when you register a domain, there's an expiration date on that. And we don't think certificate authorities should give you certs that exceed that. And right now, um, there's no protection or limitation, uh, and, and they will just give you a certificate that exceeds that, that uh, expiration date. Um, and then the last bullet here, bullet point here really goes to um, CDNs. Like we mentioned before, in some cases, it's pretty extreme. CDNs putting 700 customers on one cert. Um, we think that they should really move to a model that, that puts each customer on their own cert. Um, and if you're using subject alt names, whether you're a CDN or a company, you got to be really careful with it um, because, again, based on our understanding, um, your customers basically have the right to revoke these certificates and in some cases render your services pretty unusable. 
And that concludes our talk. Thank you all very much. Um, we have more information on our demo site, Insecure Design. Here are links to the tools we talked about. And if you want to email us about this, we have Bygone SL at Insecure Design. Does anyone have any questions? There's a question in the back. So what if your account is still valid and you're still paying for the services, just your domain name expires? What will happen is the certificate authority usually keeps track of the city and should keep track of the certificates to make sure that they renew on a friendly manner. And what they're doing now is in our case, we're just doing uh, yearly renewal for customers. So they're, that's basically the life of the certificate, or a maximum of two. We don't need more than that. Gotcha. So basically the, uh, the comment was, that when, um, and in some cases, some CDNs will um, revoke certificates or stop using certificates when customers stop using their services, um, which is helpful. Uh, and then the other point that we pointed out is, you know, what happens if customers are still using their services, but the domain just expires? Um, and CDNs could monitor that based on the expiration date. But one thing that's harder to monitor in that case is actually when the domain doesn't expire, it just transfers ownership. Um, there's really not a good way for CDNs to know when that happened. There's like a, a couple of high-level heuristics you can tell based on who is and based on um, uh, uh, s some other stuff that we mentioned before. Um, but they're probably going to run into the same problems that we do, that there isn't a really good central source or authority that can tell you that a domain transferred ownership. Um, but that is good to hear that some CDNs are, are building in some protections against this. Other questions? Yep. Yeah, the uh, screenshot we had earlier with all the stuff was bored out with 700 actual live customers. Oh, yes. So re repeat the question. Oh, sorry, the question was, um, are there any people who are still vulnerable to this after um, we have informed them that they were vulnerable to this? Um, and there may be some that have not been mentioned. The question basically is, have we ever seen this being exploited in the wild by a, a malicious actor? Um, not to my knowledge. And not to mine either. That's why I think this is novel and new. But if there are any bad guys in the audience that want to prove us wrong, by all means. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, basically, uh, the comment there was like, if you take over a domain, um, like it wasn't intentionally transferred, but you take over a domain and you get a certificate, um, that also kind of manifests itself in the same capacity that like you're in this awkward state of like, well, Komodo won't revoke that certificate because you're not the one that created it. And there are cases like that that we can definitely point to where someone was able to temporarily hijack a domain and generate a real SSL certificate. Yeah, so that's definitely happened a few times, um, but I don't know of any example where someone's done that and then revoked the other, the actual user's SSL certificate. That'd be, I'm not saying it hasn't happened, I just don't know of any examples of that. Other questions? Cool, I think, I think we're, we're getting time. Uh, cut Thank off. Thank you all very much. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>